All right, so my guest for the morning, uh, John Alexander Akon, is a deputy minister for uh, gender, children, and social protection. I know I'm right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Good morning. And thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, tight. Tight? Yeah. Tight. Yeah. Okay. If a Ghanaian politician says tight, it means it was tight. Uh, <laughs> he's been joining the studio by James R. P. Tuankra, a former member of parliament for Lower West Achievement. Thanks for joining me. Uh, he's very much uh, vibrant in the activities of the Alliance for Accountable Governance. Uh, not that uh, I don't know that, I know that, because I've covered a number of the activities as well. And thanks for joining me, sir. Right. Thanks. How was your weekend too? Well, it was cool. Incidentally, mm -hmm. uh, today is my birthday, so yesterday I, I took Happy it birthday to you. Thanks. Uh, right. uh, are we having a party? Uh, or the economy is affecting after you? After that, I'll see Minister. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. this, one, th this one will be uh, uh, soft fire, right? Sure. Politician sure. against a politician. Yeah. But uh, straight away, let's uh, go into the subject of the talents elections. I guess that should be occupying our, our minds for the next 20 to 25 minutes okay. before we get on to. Um, especially the build up up to now. We know that there's been a huge rally uh, from both sides, uh, giving indication that it's a seat that all of them want to either keep or wrestle from the hands of the other. I start with you, John. Since uh, you are in government and, and, and your government is a is the incumbent government, so to okay. speak. There, there's been a number of things. You start with the analysis and the issues about abuse of incumbency and all. Uh, same to also being being on the side of the MPP as well. All right. Let me extend my greetings to all, and especially my base of Wasi. Uh, <laughs> I think it's quite interesting if you look at the political history of this country. Um, you just said because we are the incumbency. In this particular election, there are two incumbencies involved. The incumbency of the National Democratic Congress in power. Sure, I'm and talking about that one. Not the, not the holding, <laughs> not, a, the, not the holding no, seat. It has an effect on the dynamics going on. And the incumbency of the MPP as the parliamentary seat holder until uh, the chief went out. What it meant is that if you are the incumbency, then you were thinking that you should maintain the seat. And therefore, that's also a very big factor in the equation. But you know, critically, there are seats which are lost by parties, and there are seats which are won by the opposition. If you want to understand, let's take Talency. Talency was lost by NDC, but not won by MPP. I, do, I get your point. By yeah. virtue of the permutations, permutations and, and things like and that. And the incidences thereof. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and these days, when you are can, can you recount some of the no? I'm saying that if you look the at premises the, on which yes, the NDC, uh, so to speak, lost a seat. Yeah, continuously, if you are looking at it, some of our old MPs started diminishing their returns on the elections. If you look at uh, Akulgotia, there were issues about him to the extent that if you systematically look at 2004, and I, John Akulgotia was yes. a former member of parliament. Yeah, he was yeah. there, mm -hmm. and then he lost out to the MPP guy. And before then. There were internal political issues as the fact that they should give way to some other person to come. And because of lack of that understanding, and he went through it to work at the local primary. But when it got to the national primary, the, rejected, the rejection came in, and people said, No, we're not going. And so if you look at some of the areas, from Pram, other areas, the voting for the MPP went slightly higher just because of the protest votes along the line. So basically, that is what happened in the area. And people are even saying that Kogo should be thinking of not coming again at this time if you had just listened so that we don't create those problems. So basically that was the issue. So that if NDC had done the uh, house well, housework well, then this issue should go back to NDC. But indeed, if you go to contest an incumbent, having had the opportunity, he, has also, he also has a leverage. And it's undoubtedly on this occasion, the incumbent MP is now the chief of the area. So you can imagine that then why don't you then make sure of all these factors and then capitalize on it and get the seat. And that's how I put some more oil into the equation thereon. But when it comes to abuse of incubacy, I think that to a greater extent, either we are all as party not learning from experience or we are behaving as usual. Because how comes systematically? You mean both parties? Both parties. How comes it matter for every election when there's... Now, normally it's not even the incubacy. It is where the seat is hottest and where it's supposed to get towards a particular side. Now, haven't you as parties complained that there's a bit of incumbency when MPP was in power, when they're trying to annex, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, by elections. Yes. It's yes. happening for me. Thoroughly. Closer thoroughly, to me. thoroughly reported. Have they also leader. complained? 
So it's so systematic. And the interesting one, and I, I keep talking about that one, they are sharing money. They are doing this, they are doing this. But all of us know that in spite of the spending of money, how many people can you give money to? So it has become a normal complaint in systems where either you are losing or because somebody else is the incumbent. And that for us as a, as a political party, we should be careful. Because continuously we get accused of various issues. And then we rather fire those issues when it comes to the crunch of decision because of power. And the eventual result is that we end up and people start now taking all the parties on. So to me, obviously there will be an incumbency advantage. For example, a president can join the campaign team apart from the various uh, people in it, the party chairman and all that. So that alone, you may say, is an incumbency advantage. If the president is coming around, he has to be accorded on the protocols. That alone is an incumbency advantage. There's nothing you can do about it. Even within parties, and I'll give you a small example. When the Akufado was contesting Tremati, at a point he complained about a uh, plane being given to Tremati to go to Tamale and distracting his own uh, campaign in an area was going to go. proud to 2008. Yeah, exactly yeah, so. That was a uh, Hakma no. yeah. yeah, It was Hakma, yes. It was Hakma. Yes. It was Hakma. Yes, so there were issues strongly there. So therefore, advance of incumbency, it is there. But when that misuse now becomes the problem. And I think by a light, it's only a struggle for the seat. And the counter accusations and counter should well be looked at. I think that the seat had an owner. And obviously the owner was NDC. NDC lost the seats. And remember, when it comes to the Northern Boots, you should look at it very well. If you're in Ashanti or Eastern region, and then somebody decides to go independent, there's only one occasion in Ashanti region where an independent won because of protest. Bekwai? No. Yeah. Bekwai is two. Bekwai and Bosome Fremu. Fremu. Only two. But if you look at numbers in Ashanti region, independents do not disrupt the process at all. I mean, you are voting about 60 something thousand, this other thousand. If you even draw 20,000, you cannot mm. approve the increment. The only difference is then they're not any disruption in the structure. Because we're talking about 15,000. Yeah. So somebody even stretches about 5,000 of yours, there's trouble. And that's why it has made it a bit... Because uh, the numbers on both sides are not huge. Are not huge. Mm. The voter population is also small. It's also small. Relatively. So any ripple will have to... Generally, most of them will go back to your party. But that ripple will make if it's closer for the other party to take advantage and go through. And that's why I'm saying that some seats are won, others are lost. And MPP is capitalizing on the incumbency. The chief also belongs to us, though he claims that no, I now belong to all. But NDC is also the incumbent. It was our seat. And therefore, okay. if fortunately or unfortunately the seat is vacant, it should go to the rightful owners. All right. I would want to ask some questions, though, but I would want you also to make your preliminary comment, <laughs> yeah. uh, especially also pertaining to um, what the concerns have been. Uh, it depends on where I feel doing my independent media analysis, where you're coming from. If you're on the part of the MPP, you're worried. Um, perhaps perceived uh, incumbent uh, advantage mm -hmm. or abuse, so to speak. Uh, if you're on the part of the NDC, so uh, reservedly, you're worried about how, well, you're also doing the same thing and you are claiming that I'm abusing incumbency. Mm -hmm. hey, I, I want to uh, take off from where he left uh, off. He, he left off. Mm. That we politicians ought to be very careful the way we project ourselves and eventually we go back to also complain that you know the the populace is you know accusing us of certain things mm. because we lead and right? say oh we are sharing money and it is like he said when we are in opposition we have a way of saying when we get into government to our cry changes and that is exactly what is happening i'm not too happy about this kind of thing because eventually what it means is that politicians when I looked at, you know, people who are thieves and they will, you know, spend money. So for me, that aspect of it, it is just not good. But on the question of incumbency, I think we have said it over and over that there must be some kind of, uh, uh, I think it's IEA that attempted to bring something to sort of guide. Some, and guide some laid down structure. Some, absolutely. To, to guide and guide incumbent government so that certain things are not done clearly showing that you know government uh, weight is okay let me ask you this um, if a government uh, if a government in power or a party empowers government um, through its representatives uh, within 
coinciding with the period of, uh, let's say, a by-election or a main election, mm -hmm. goes to make donations, uh, that becomes news, other mm -hmm. than what if the same donations were made by the opposition parties, are not right? Sure, 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 sure. Okay. That, 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 that is termed abuse of incumbency. It's, it's, like you said, depending upon where you, you, you are looking at it from. Yeah. If you are in government, you say, no, 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 that's not, it's a normal, uh, you know, practice in campaigning and funding, uh, as it were, uh, political parties. Uh, but then from the opposition side, say, ah, because uh, you are in government, you have free money, and this, and, or you are using some unorthodox uh, means in getting uh, funding. Okay? So my take is that when government or uh, in government, you ought to be a little bit careful, even though there's a very thin line between what the president can do, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, campaigning. It was for one, just one seat. And you see the amount of, you know, uh, energy and everything that is put. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss what, the what atmosphere is uh, perhaps also precipitating all this, right. or perhaps even um, calling for all this to be happening. Right. But let, let's look at this. I've covered four elections in Ghana, okay. uh, 2000. I've covered 2004, 2008, and 2012 as a journalist. Right. Um, I've seen differences in the way voters have reacted in 2000, mm. have reacted also in 2004, in 2008. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't talk about 2012, because uh, yeah. the president's death also played critical roles in mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. but. It doesn't matter how good the economy was. For example, in 2008, the economy was good. Mm. I mean, relatively, sure, done this. Sure. And then in 2000, the economy was not as bad as, I mean, we saw in 2000, perhaps the eight. Mm. Do you get me? Sure. But people still voted governments out. Mm. And so if we go on the premise of arguing that the economy is bad, could that be a benchmark by which people will say, ultimately, countrywide, people will vote a government out? I mean, well, we're doing political science uh, discussions so sure. as on politicians the, on, so. on the basis of the the as to how who should be retained in office or who should not be retained we're talking even by a by election so to speak yes so based on the, econ the see, performance I, of the economy you yes, yes yeah because i see that the mm. argument is premised on the economy is bad but for people of talent it may not be a yastic no by which they vote no. their mp sure sure so i i am going to say that i don't think like you said looking at the previous elections Ghanaians have generally voted because of the economy. Yeah. I, I, I don't but 2000, you know, economy. I, I, 2000 I, I, economy was not as bad. I, I, as, yeah. That's it. And then governments have come to say, oh, look at what we have done. We have done roads. We've done uh, schools. We've, you know, extended electricity. We've done this. But at the end of the day, both governments had gone out of, you know, power. So I believe that Ghanaians have their own way of voting, perhaps depending upon. Uh, the individual one, you need votes for both the president and the uh, parliamentary candidate. People might, for some reason, will not want a particular candidate and therefore extend it even to the, the president and vote that way just because of just one reason that the pres uh, that candidate you know, had shown, and they, they are averse to that particular, and they decide to take, especially so, you realize that they don't even think that voting for somebody or voting somebody out means four years. So later on, in, in the course of this, they go, ah, you know, but we thought that even this guy would have been better. Why did we even take off this uh, MP? It means that on the spare of a moment, they take a decision, and they, they go ahead and vote. So for me, I don't think that the Ghanaian voter, even though it's sophisticated and knows what he's doing, it is not the normal political sign, the things that you see, you know, in the outside world where people would see and analyze the economy and you know. use it, you know. Maybe for just one reason, something that happened to him, he needed something from a candidate, and he didn't have it, and that's it. The party should suffer for that. Okay. Uh, John, I know you want to make your contribution. As you make your contribution, Let's look at it realistically, their permutations. There was an incumbent. Um, he decided to rest stop and say, I don't want to go again because I've been traditionally chosen to become a chief of my traditional area. And then also, well, there was uh, an individual who, didn't, who was not liked by his party. He contested, and so people defied. 
and voted skirt and blouse. Now we have an, e an elected person, entirely new, perhaps maybe more liking by his kith and kin. How does that influence the way the voting patterns will be based on what the president, who is currently uh, now the president or the candidate at the time for the NDC had, and then what the MP who is a chief also had, so to speak? Yeah, thanks. Uh, let me try just slightly on the first one. Sure, you sure, said it sure. in terms of presentations. Uh, opposition does presentation. You also do presentation. Yeah, because it's seen in different lights in the media, exactly. and the interpretations are different. Exactly. And then let's come to what we we're just talking about in terms of uh, the election itself permutation, where that a salary, whether you think it's economy or not, it does not necessarily reflect in the voting pattern. But if you look at it critically, voters have been divided into three categories, more or less two: those who will still be NDC and those who will be in MPP. You mean that had wool the, that, in the wool yes. people? Okay. Then there's the middle people, the swing people, who look at things more critically. They, you don't see them talking, they argue within their own peers, they don't go out to hear them, but they argue logically and critically. And the things they look at is, yes, the economy may not be doing good, but they will do the analysis to see whether it is because somebody is not performing or some circumstances are precipitated and whether such a person has the tendency to take us forward. So in the middle level, the analysis is very clear and they make a lot of changes in that regard. So I thought we should now start to study the character of the swing voters who may not be only looking at the current economy, but looking at the potential of growth, depending on who is in power. I think personality is also counting in our elections now. If you look at right from Rollins' time up to today, Gentle Giant, J.J. Rollins, and all that, it's also counting. Still counts. It does. It still counts. So demeanor, composure, it's also very vital in doing this. In talency, remember, President Mama won. So by 17,000, in and, excess of 17,000. That's what I'm telling you. There's a more in of 17,000. The MPP candidate won in excess of 11,000. Exactly. So and clearly. The NDC candidate lost by 9,000. Uh, got 9,000 votes. Exactly. So 11, 9,000, 2,000. And there was a PNC candidate, I believe. Exactly. Even within that one. So clearly the permutation should be clear. Why did President Mama win and his parliamentary candidate lost? Clearly it's an internal party problem. Otherwise, normally, differences between a presidential and parliamentary should not be very wide. Be there close. are no issues. Very close. At times, this one on top of the other one. So if those problems have been solved, which I think they are because of my, where I'm coming from, then the likelihood of NDC winning will be very high, unless the undercurrent is not there. But I don't, for a moment, underrate the potential of MPP, because they've gotten the chance to be in parliament. The chief now belongs to them. And therefore, can we capitalize on these obvious situations and get ourselves going? And therefore, let's go fighting. Now, if you are studying very critically, there was issue around Ifijasi, uh, uh, uh area, uh, uh, Usuansa, uh, uh, Usuansa, where the parties did not contest because we're going, going into the 2012 elections. Okay, okay. And then we're okay. changing the political parties' okay. law. And we said that the constitution has not been amended, amended. and therefore we cannot apply the old Ooh. register because yeah. of biometric. Make. But you know, there were issues there. Two issues emerged. We were closer to elections, a few months to elections. The ECC says, no, we said two weeks we should conduct, we are going to conduct. Okay. But I thought we also going to say that by the airline, we should use a new voter biometric register, register. which was not ready. And therefore, ECC said, let's use the old one. But also said that, no, no, because we have done that, so eventually that did not come up. But you know what happened? MPP was obviously going to win that seat. To that extent, with a few months left, it was going to waste of resources. NDC was going to find it difficult to win that seat. So why would you want to contest when there are issues who can let you go away from that particular situation? So it, to both sides, it made a lot of sense. There are seats you contest, you contend because of prestige. And there are seats you have to make let go. Now if you look at PNC and look at CPP and other parties contesting, Without conjunction, you can just see that they want to make their presence, some of them will make their presence part, as a prelude to the main elections of 2016. Otherwise, in terms of winning, eh, the probabilities are very low on some other sides, while the two are there. So clearly, there will be issues. There will be economy. But if you argue on that floor, there are other issues which are also so positive. So what does the balance sheet look like to get judged correctly? But I'm saying those things do not, not directly influence those who are dangerous in our political scheme now are the center voters, the swing voters.
they are very dangerous. Uh, I, I always love your analysis because you tend to build it from a certain point in time. But I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> in, in that part of the country, I mean, things about swing voters and things don't come in. I hear, based on the discussions I've had over the weekend with certain uh, people who, who are politicians of course know the area very well, is things like Kith and Kin, tribesmen, and likeness and things like that come into play greatly. That is why you see a mass swing of in excess of 5,000 people voting for another person, yes. whilst they vote at the same time for another person. So it means that the consciousness is there. They are very much aware what they are voting for. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. How is that going to come into play uh, in the melee of all that has happened? Last minute campaigning, huge pictures showing massive attended rallies and uh, really boisterous enthusiasm from both sides, accusations, counter accusations, as if this is going to be a do die affair <laughs> or almost like a prelude to what the permutations will be for the main election. Very well. Before I, I get on to it, uh, let me also say that. We, I will not dismiss completely that the Ghanaian voter does not look at economy. Because I, I, no, I, I, I don't think we've said that yet. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, no, I thought I don't, said I don't they will not know whether the, no, the economy is doing good or is doing bad. That's what the Ghanaian, no, that, that's, yeah, I mean, the okay. typical Ghanaian vote. But I still believe that they use the, their type of economy. That is what affects them. The, like, you know, in the local palace, if you are trim not to abba. So they would not go and analyze whether uh, there's inflation or there's deflation or there's... Uh, uh, it is the micro indicators that the, whether they the dollar operate. is 40 or 10 it is mine. There's a micro People indicator. Yeah. Really the inflation trends that, locally. Uh, absolutely. And they look at whether they can afford a cutlass. And you know, those basic things, a, a, a bar of key soup, uh, those are the things that they, 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 they look at to, you know, as their economy. And then they, they will vote them over that, those lines. That one is, is very, very clear. So you don't just uh, uh, completely dismiss them that they don't look at, uh, at the economy at all. Their type of economy is a micro, like you said, what really you know, affects them at the local level. Now coming over to what uh, uh, you, uh, you look at s certain typical areas and you see that when you compare even those of the uh, uh, the party that won the seat over a period. And if they had changed candidates, you see that the particular candidates come with their own strengths and either build on what was there already or lose votes, even though uh, the party might have won. So these kids and kings and whether really, really play roles. Seriously, they really, really play roles. And I believe that that is why ND is not, uh, NDC is not taking this thing lightly at all. Because the, 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 he's not just a chief, mm -hmm. he's a paramount chief. You won't say both, both are not taking this. No, no, we, we are taking advantage, but I mean, they, they are not dismissing that fact. I mean, uh, MPP thinks that, yes, I mean, this is a whole paramount chief. And, uh, His word is law. I, in I, many respects, I am telling you, and they, they really they could have great I, influence. Right? I before I went to Parliament was uh, working in Kumasi as the area manager for SIC for the northern sector. So I, I traveled. You're very quite much familiar with, the, with terrain. The, the, the terrain because every quarter I had to travel all over to Boku and all those places where we had offices. And they have a huge respect for their chiefs. There's no doubt about it at all. I mean, those of us down south. Uh, okay, uh, so you've laid the ground rules. The NDC yeah. is losing. All right, yeah. so now <laughs> the aspect about um, um, the bickering, uh, the sharing of motorbikes, uh, I'm just in front of me. I can see a motorbike on the screen, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, shared. We don't want uh, the bikers to be riding on, on the roads, but we want to share it to them. So, uh, uh, but, but what do you make of it? Well, uh, I the counter accusations and the last minute yeah, rallies yeah, yes, and things like that. Well, well, as, as visiting a traditional uh, person and not wearing a shirt and that becomes no, for, a, 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 a tabloid. I, mean, I, I, a tabloid. I, I, I believe that these are things that can be verified. So whether going to that place is the traditional way of doing it or not, I mean, it should be. I, I was surprised that uh, Dr. Park uh, two days ago or so said clearly that, oh, yeah, he had even taken some whites there. And the other. this morning he said, no, no, you see, uh, it's not like that. And uh, uh, the people, well, he's leaving it to God whether uh, they went for juju or not. I mean, I said, ah, 
By the time we politicians, we, we also have a way of doing it. But look, sharing things, well, if you wanted people to go and campaign in the villages, obviously they wouldn't work. You needed to you know, assist them too. So giving a motorbike to a visitor would, um, for me, would not uh, make any news. It shouldn't, it shouldn't make any news anyway. Okay. But except that. As politicians, I would want to ask you, for example, um, the, the former, um, is it foreign secretary? Is it uh, a, a state's uh, 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 Hillary Clinton was her position? Secretary of State. Secretary, Secretary of State. state. Sure. And the former First Lady yeah. is gunnering to become the, the, the Democratic uh, uh, Party presidential candidate. Sure. She has uh, raised a lot of fu funding. And she, I, I believe, among all the personalities, is raising the biggest mm. because of the connection she has. Sure. And under normal circumstances, if you're not holding an election, you wouldn't be spending all that in a county or something of the sort. Mm -hmm. And i.e., we're talking about electoral areas, constituency, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so it shouldn't become unusual if parties uh, are distributing and doling out things because it's a period for you to campaign. You see, uh, Roland, the difference is that there you have to account for. I mean, there's uh, right. a body that will make sure that you account for every person that you are uh, using. And how you spend it. Absolutely. But here, we don't have sizes. So, I, and especially an incumbent government can use all sorts of means. I mean, I'm not saying NDC alone because it's happened. I mean, but like which is also open to speculation, either sure. by the opposition or the tabloid press. Obviously, but the, the truth of the matter is that some they see, some uh, like you know giving out motorbikes are, are physical things that you can always tell that Roland has given ten and I, James has given two. That one you you can tell and see. The, even the number of flags that are spread around, you could, the number of T-shirts. Actually, the MPP's flags look better. They look nicer than the NDC's. Oh, well, but what they, do you they, say they to might that? be few. <laughs> they, they might be inferior. Few, few. Few. I mean, yes, in terms of the numbers. Now you are defending. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. To be honest, I will not go there critically because, in terms of money, you cannot say MPP doesn't have money. There's every indication that they have money. So, in terms of contesting, they are prepared for it. It's reflected in their primaries. So it's not a party to only say we are in opposition, but in terms of resources, you cannot underrate them. For those who want to remove their shares, if it's a culture, that's all right. But importantly, uh, for state of politics, we need to find out, because for some of us, we follow politics for a long time, but we have not seen it done before. Then it's at our blind side. Yeah, good. Yeah, so if it has come out... It also shows that you've never visited there before. Uh, absolutely. Well, uh, sure. I know from some Finland, people. I've been there, but I've not visited there yeah. particularly. Sure. So I cannot say for it. But I'm saying it's so interesting that the only time it has come to the fore is when we are contesting this particular election because the first time talents have been contested. And those who visit various leaders are not only MPP. So how can the pictures are only MPP pictures and others have not come? Does that mean they have not gone there? Does that mean the first time a political party has visited? Well, I told the NDC went there, but they met him in a park. It was not in his territory. <laughs> I mean, in territory means that he's within a pressing. Control, thing. yes, yes. So I'm saying or, that. Or where he lives or where he's. Uh, so I'm saying that it's interesting. This is the first time I've seen that particular one. So we need to research and find out the culture that let, let it be. But it's interesting for all those years, we've not seen that at Indiana in control like this. That's all right if it is. But then we need to find out reality what is it. Because in politics, I guess so many things go on. We don't know. So that is for you if it's safe. Because strikingly, the. Wouldn't to me was the Ashanti Regional Chairman yeah, yeah. has constantly been quoting the Bible, so he needs to marry himself. That's for him, it's not for me. But if it's a culture, let's go by it. We all do it. If it's supposed to be a culture, just a liberalization of the religion, we should find it very good. But on the whole, if you have read some of the interesting things, yeah, you would just say that President Mama said that by election, this brand is a dress rehearsal for 2016. Akufuado is a win for it's for the home stretch towards 2016. So the interest level... Home stretch is almost like an American term. They use it for American football, I believe. Yes. Because that's yes. when you see the final pack of exactly. American football <laughs> and you run towards it, making sure that exactly. you run first exactly. and go yeah. and touch Tef, Tef uh, Club was using it for the last lap. <laughs> yes. They say that's a home yeah, stretch. Home stretch, yes. You need some more power. And then you have energy. to touch down. They call it touch down in American exactly. football. Exactly. Yes, like you're saying, he has a great. You are campaign. If you know the northern, the nature... Apart from the main towns, others live very far. I always maintain that if somebody stands like Subi or Accra or Dodo do, 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 and somebody is standing in Abdam or Talensi and gets about 15, 20, 30, that's more work than you within town in terms of distances covered. Yeah. And there, the only access, unfortunately, not all the roads are motorable, so the only access is motorbike. So, how do you get access to go and campaign if the motorbikes are not there? 
And of course, this is the first time. 2016 is going to come. Remember the issues about Kennedy, and the phone, and the accusation on Jake and his people. It involved a lot of motorbikes. It will come around again for campaigning purposes. If they are not campaigning, you mean on both fronts? On both oh, fronts. Straight away. Okay. Straight away. You need resources to campaign. And like you also said, in America, and it's something we've been thinking about. What do we do? IPAC should continuously explore funding of political parties. If they do the calculation permutation, let me tell you just one small calculation. If you take a t-shirt, don't give anybody money. Just take one t-shirt. For the last 2012, La Coste, China, we've printed uh, mm -hmm. a, a boss, your printed mm -hmm. boss, mm -hmm. will cost you anything between 12 and 15 Ghana cities. In China? In Ghana, eventually. But make it for the sake of arithmetic to be 10 cities and do a thousand. It is 10,000. In context, it is 100 million old Ghana cities. A uh, thousand in normal constituency is not enough. If you do 5,000, which is still not enough, it is 500 million. It's untenable. We should do something about how we fund political parties. We should copy from countries who have gone through the mill and are not doing fundraising to support and get accountability working. Otherwise, the issue of money in politics will not help this economy. Is this something as a politician you're worried about? Yes, personally, I am. Because why would you ordinarily go and spend 500, mm. I'm talking about at least 500 million on T-shirts okay. for 5,000. Those who do 10,000. Yeah, now you're fighting I, I, just, I just want old, the imports. Old, old CD quotation. Yeah, I want the imports to come. Because we're talking about 1 billion. 1 billion in Ghana sense. Old, old is 100,000. That's 100,000. That's 100, 000. 000. You know what it That's can huge, do? Really. That's exactly. huge, really. Exactly. Builds a house. Yes. Exactly. For a so, family to live in. <laughs> so if, I mean, you spend, yeah. if you are spending that much, and you are talking about number of MPs, 275, yeah. If even 200 does that, mm. multiply... But you know, realistically, with the way you, the politicians, are conducting your activities, 100,000 really is just uh, a drop in the it's ocean. It sure. won't sure. win you... I'm even uh, trying to no. be conservative. Yeah, sure. I'm trying to be you agree, don't you? No, no, you I, have I, been I a do. former member. I'm, I'm trying to be conservative. You can't contest now because you need to raise a lot of money. Sure. Yeah. It's I'm trying to be conservative. That's why I'm even using figures like 1 billion, 100,000. Now, if you multiply, you, re, you actually see the level of outlay we are actually using. What do we do? We are all complaining. Public is complaining. The person who is spending is also complaining. How do we handle this situation? Will it be like that till ever? It shouldn't be. It should not be. Okay. There should be a way of doing So now we need to have a rethink. Look, yeah. the point is 2016, we're going to spend a lot of money than we spent in 2012. Sure. Despite all the complaints that we're seeing, we, we, we heard in, 20, in 2012, yeah. and uh, reservedly, accusations on government or the Jamuhama government that, well, the overruns that we had in the back, those monies were channeled into, into campaigning, etc. Yeah. Our bait's not being proven. Yeah. We're still yeah. going to have a lot more. Uh, monetization of our politics. Sure. How do we stem that, let's say after 2016? Because 2016 almost is inevitable. Is do we need to put legislation in place? Do we need to have structures, accountability, and things like that? I, I think that we must have some kind of uh, organization, a body. Mm. That will you think you're going monitor. to see it in your lifetime? Uh, we, 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 we should. We should. Because what, from the experience that I've had, a lot of the people who are contesting and having been to Parliament and spent, when they get there, they realize that there's nothing there. <laughs> they realize maybe that your time, you're, you're a Kolo MP. Maybe your time there was no, there was no, nothing in Parliament. I guess now they have, a, they have something in Parliament. Otherwise, Why? they wouldn't what, continue contesting. What is, what is that? No, what is that? I mean, you, you tell me. I, I am telling you that a lot of them get uh, uh, disappointed. A lot, lot Meaning of monetary, them. there's prestige, for example. I call you honorable, former member of parliament. It's and not an easy that, position. Does that give you food? Does that put food on the table? Then what, what do we struggle in talent, for example? <laughs> we're, we're, we're washing the place with a lot of money. Wow. From in, in terms from of governance, parties, in yeah. terms of governance issue, but then we should have a situation where we can uh, regulate the amount of money that we... Because the other way is that is the, eventually what it means is that some people will find means of recouping whatever they put in. That, there's no two ways about it. There's no two ways that people will find, perhaps not all of it, but eventually, if they get into government, let me put it that way. Because when you're in opposition, you might not have it. But when it is in government, you go and, and give him even a board chairman, and he decides to go and put an office and compete with the chief executive. He starts even cutting the laser, and then the next time you hear is that he's been announced that he is the chief executive. And that is not good for the country. 
So we ought to be very careful because eventually they will find a way of whatever that they are spending. If you are in opposition, you find that one. You might. But once it gets into the government, he will find a way of getting it. Because if he's going to uh, uh, sell his house or something to go and campaign and win and get into it, that is a, is a danger. In well, addition to your contribution, there's a fact that, well, if you don't put money into it and try to win and try to continuously win, you have no job after you leave politics, yes, really. Yes. Yeah. How do you become an honorable working or going back to your work? How will your subordinates call you or whoever is ahead of you call you? Oh, honorable, I'm going to call you. Do you get what it's I mean? Not even going it's to, the way we perceive the it's politics. It's not going, even going to whether it is easy to even secure a job after that. Mm, it's a, Some in teaching services. The whole mixed easier. bag of issues. Teaching service makes it easier, but others, it's not that easy, easy at all. The moment your CV is put down, they will be thinking management, well, how do I control such a person if I give you a position? So it creates more problem for you, particularly if you are not always pensioned. If you are not already on pension, then you have more problem now because you've cut short your pension life. Which will reflect in your future life. Yes, so there are that's issues that are very interesting. interesting yeah. Because I was earning so much, I got in Parliament, I was taking a third of what I was earning. Oh. Well, good you went. You're called honorable. I say that's a prestige. No, but, You're going to get yeah, it. Let so me just go back. I, I had advised uh, you. Uh, so honestly, you there's a research. I work with uh, Angulo Dashanti, and eventually they were taking more than me from a commensurate position, even in government. So we need to balance the act very well, like he said. But there's prestige in it. Parliament is the only body who embosses their vehicles MP. Nobody does that. Even no, after no, they leave, they no still put MP. I don't no I, minister, some of them still put I never put No minister MP. does that. Yeah, one in a thousand. No, no yes. minister does that. It's only parliament. parliament. But it's equally important that we go into the nitty gritties of parliament. Like the accusation we spoke about, uh, we overdrew because of elections. I think like we are commonly saying we should work out because Parliament approves budget. If there's an override, overrun of budget, all the facts should be known by Parliament on the reports. Let's talk to the facts. Again, continuous accusation is not helping us. Under Benjamin Kumbo, something happened on the floor of Parliament where he was the majority leader when the dreadship issue came in. And I think a budget was going to be read. One side was Dreship, the other side was Woyome. So as the finish that he was speaking, he said that we are defending our corruption, but in this room, the two of us are behaving this way. Unfortunately, that one, he could have set an agenda for very solid discussion. But Katie Yamo did not get it right, so we attacked him. He sport a very nice agenda to address issues of corruption and how we should all behave outside in, 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 in government. So I think that there are genuine concerns. People do it. The other problem, if you remember, in NDC, they gave guidelines for elections. To the extent that it was guidelines, guidelines, to the extent that they said that if you have not been a constituency executive before, you cannot be a regional executive, but matter national. It was contested in court, and the party had to come out and resolve it. But the idea was simple. For those who don't do no contribution throughout four years, and just come when it is time, having gotten their money, accumulated it because you had a purpose against those who continuously fund the party activities. And for those who live abroad, they will not contribute. When they come, they change and try to contest you financially. These are issues we should address. And it's not, it's, it's not needs. And it's reflected in the MPP primaries very strongly. Some very sad if you are looking at those who lost and the circumstances of their contribution to their party and losing on the altar of finance. We should look at a critical. Are we fair to people? Is it worth the effort people put in to get there? At times, we need to find out that we are not fair to people. Mm. In, in, in another discussion, we have asked, does it even affect the quality of the people that do governance at the end of the day? But mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to change the subject. Because let, we've been, let, let we've been talking this, we're talking this my for, advice for, for the last who is not minutes. a professional and cannot get out of parliament to go and practice his profession, mm. you should think twice. Oh, well, all of them want to be lawyers, so I guess they say law, you never, you can always, <laughs> uh, all of them are doing law now, so that's okay. <laughs>